Hi guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Total Wolf has revealed Mercedes' succession plan for Lewis Hamilton after his departure to Ferrari in 2025, confirming that Mercedes will make a bold decision when it comes to Hamilton's replacement. That narrows the list down from several drivers down to possibly just one or two. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for all the support yesterday as well. I know we gained loads of new subscribers, I really appreciate that. Got plenty to share with you guys today. Firstly, on racing balls, I think I'm just going to call them racing balls to be honest especially when they signed a new academy driver the other day and she called them visa cash app racing balls in her twitter post so that's what i'm gonna go with because at least it keeps the team with some sort of an identity but anyway apparently the livery is going to be heavily inspired by the toro rosso design from back in the day something like this something like this but um the stripe that you see will be white rather than red but apparently it's gonna look something like a pretty iconic toro rosso design to be fair so maybe it's not all bad but it is of course mainly bad the main talk though of the last few days, of course, overshadowing all the Andretti news actually, is Ferrari and Mercedes. The future of these two respective teams, why Hamilton, as he confirmed in his social media post yesterday, really feels like he feels the same way that he did in 2013 when he joined Mercedes. In terms of that Ferrari are going to nail it over the coming years, especially when the new regulations come around, and Mercedes clearly will not. I mean, he literally compared those two situations, joining Merck in 2013, joining Ferrari in 2025, and let's not forget what happened with McLaren right over the coming years. Is. They did not have a pretty time and Hamilton got that bang on the money when he joined Mercedes. So the clear implication is from Hamilton comparing the two situations that he also feels like Mercedes could be on a downhill trajectory. Ferrari do seem to be on the uptick. There's many reasons as to why that might be the case. Even rumours yesterday that Rory Byrne, who was um, well, long-time consultant now at Ferrari but hasn't really been having, apparently at least, a particularly forthright role. But he was well known for working very closely on several championship winning cars in Formula 1, especially I would say the Ferraris of 2002-2004, which dominated their respective championships with Michael Schumacher at the wheel. So that's another thing that Fred Vasseur seems to be cooking up. This as well. So Fred Vasseur has got rid of a few people, right? Laurent Mekis is gone. Bonotto's gone. Obviously, Rueda is gone. So clearing house and bringing in new people. Xavier Marcos, though, who he's the we are checking guy on the radio, right? He's Charles Leclerc's race engineer. But apparently Leclerc wants him to stay. He wants to continue working with him. So that is apparently a done deal. And, and Xavi will stay as part of Ferrari working with Leclerc, which is fair enough if Leclerc wants to do that. That's perfectly of his own volition. The question, of course, would be, who does Hamilton have? We talked about Bono the other day and many other race engineers as well, that, or just engineers generally speaking, that might want to come over to Ferrari. This is a critical time for Ferrari. Ferrari are experiencing the Hamilton effect in many senses. Lots of Mercedes engineers would love to join them, as with many engineers some other teams would like to join them as well. That's what Formula Uno said yesterday that we looked at. Mercedes have the, the other problem. They have to try and limit the brain drain that they've already suffered massively over the last several years, and that's what we said yesterday. Shovlin, Bono, among others, even uh, Ricardo Moscone, the head of trackside performance, apparently he might even want to go with Hamilton to Ferrari. So it's a serious problem that Mercedes have to deal with, and they also have to consider who the hell do you get to replace Hamilton? It's a massive challenge. You know, without Hamilton in these most recent couple of seasons they wouldn't have been as competitive as they were in the Constructors' Championship. For all that they said about, oh, you know, well done, George. You won us, the, or you got a second in the Constructors by the good race at Abu Dhabi, which he had. You know, the Constructors' results aren't made over one race. They're made over the course of the season, and Hamilton obviously scored far more points. This, just interestingly enough, the trajectory of the seats at Ferrari, the way this is done, by the way, is just who replaced who in that seat. It's not done like, oh, this is car A, this is car B. It's simply who came in to replace which driver. Schumacher, Raikkonen, Alonso, Vettel, Sainz, and now Hamilton. Not a bad selection, of course, but the question for Mercedes is not only do they have to try and hang on to as many engineers as they can and not continue to regress as arguably they have done over the last few years, and seemingly Hamilton feels like that is destined to continue. Maybe this year's an uptick, and Hamilton, I think, believes this year's car can be good, but in the longer term for 2026, his feeling is that Ferrari are the best bet. Mercedes Mercedes, though, is still a very attractive seat on the grid. Most drivers would love to go and drive in that Mercedes car. They're still second in the championship this most recent season. Sainz will be chiefly among them. If Sainz could choose a seat, he'd probably choose the Mercedes. To be fair, he might choose the Red Bull, but I don't know if they would necessarily let him back, and that's the concern. Basically, there's drama. Jos Verstappen, Sainz's family, 
they don't get on particularly well, mainly because of the Verstappen side, but that's a topic for another day. So I don't really see Sainz Verstappen back in a car, back in a team together, like they were back in the Toro Rosso days, but at least it, I suppose it's possible. But given the turnaround in these two respective teams, that also means that there will be a Red Bull seat available, and this is usually what happens. When massive driver moves occur, the entire market kind of goes into chaos. Like when Vettel left Ferrari, or even when he joined Ferrari, loads of things turn around, and with Hamilton joining Ferrari himself, there is no way that this doesn't have major repercussions within the driver market. Obviously, there's a seat available at Mercedes, there's probably a seat available at Red Bull in the relatively near future. Daddy Kvyat's trying to get on the action, but that seems relatively unlikely. These, though, are all the contracts expiring in 2024. So these are pretty much all the drivers that Mercedes could go for. But also, it's not just Mercedes, right? Let's say Alonso goes to Mercedes, or let's say Sainz goes to Red Bull. I don't know. That leaves a seat open at Aston Martin. Who goes in there? Like, it causes a whole merry-go-round, really, when a big opportunity is available at Mercedes, a that we did not expect to be available for really the next several years. So these are the immediate on the surface options for Mercedes, but there are others that we'll discuss in a second. I don't really see Mercedes going for Perez when he's gone. Theoretically, they could bring Bottas back. I mean, I don't think it would be the worst decision because they have to manage what's going on with Russell. Russell is expected to be the number one guy and, you know, like Russell would say, he was probably forecast the number one seed, you know, when he said he was forecast the podium. And, you know, probably Russell felt that when he joined Mercedes, Hamilton would, you know, maybe win in 2022 or whatever, then he'd disappear, he'd retire. Russell would become the number one man, and that would be how it went. And maybe Mercedes, by not offering Hamilton the two plus one that he wanted, felt the same way. They were like, well, we kind of want to give Russell the, the seat here. We want him to kind of move into that role maybe sooner than Hamilton wanted. So, you know, they kind of forced Hamilton out in some ways, and he went to the Ferrari felt like it was the better opportunity. But Russell's now the number one. Do you want to solidify that by giving him a support driver, as it were? Do they have enough faith in Russell's abilities? He's been inconsistent the most recent season. His race pace is clearly quite a few steps behind where Hamilton was the most recent year. And despite the fact that he's very good, do they want to just, you know, make Russell the Hamilton and then give him like a support driver, as it were? Is that in Mercedes, you know, interest? Is that really the direction they want to go down? I'm not so convinced that they will. So I don't think they're going to sign a Perez or a Bottas or a driver like that. I think they're more likely to try and sign someone more competitive. Sainz is for sure an option. I think it's possible. I think it's a relatively safe option. They could also sign Ocon as well. The issue is with Sainz or Ocon, they will clash with Russell. There's no doubt about it. And Ocon I don't rate massively highly anyway, but... Ocon has a history battling with teammates, and yes, he has the connection to Mercedes, the connection to Toto, but George and Ocon in the same team, like, you know, that would, if you thought Alonso Ocon was bad and feisty enough, like, I think Russell Ocon would be definitely on that kind of level. The driver you might look for, for like a risk-free option, I guess Alex Albon has got to be, he is probably the top of my list. If you want to go for a choice that isn't too much of a gamble, Albon might have an offer from Red Bull, he might not, we don't really know. There are rumours about that yesterday, there's been rumours that the reason why that's leaked is because Albon's camp is trying to get Mercedes to give him an offer type thing, just standard driver market shenanigans. But Albon and George, they get along well, I don't think it would be too feisty on track as I think it would be with Sainz or with Ocon. I think Albon's a great driver and could definitely compete with George, but I I don't think there's as much potential recipe for disaster as if you put another, you know, really feisty driver in the seat. Albon has kind of been known to be very fast, but maybe doesn't quite have the killing instinct or the cutting edge or whatever you want to say that some other drivers have. So I think Albon would be a sensible option. Being with Williams, it does make a fair bit of sense. But there are other options which are somewhat bolder. Ricardo as well, not that they're going to get Ricardo, but Helmut Marco did say that Ricardo ain't going anywhere. I don't think like he's definitely locked down to that Red Bull deal, so that seems to be the plan. But yeah, George and Hamilton, they were sharing some discussions here on social media over the last, well, few hours really, Hamilton made this public. But Mercedes will have to choose. Do they go for a somewhat safer option to replace Hamilton, or do they go for a bold choice? And this is what Toto Wolff is implying that they will do, and it's also what Mark Hughes from Motorsport Magazine believes they will do as well. And Mark Hughes is pretty well versed in this type of stuff, so I definitely take his opinion with some degree of validity, and what he's looking at 
at is Mercedes teenage prodigy, as it were, Andrea Kimi Antonelli. So he believes, as he actually says here in the replies, revisit this at the end of the season, Fred, because Fred says they will not take this risk. Carlos wants long-term stability, and I think Albon as well. For me, that puts Alonso in the catbird seat. And as Mark then goes on to say, revisit this at the end of the season, Fred, Mercedes will absolutely take this risk, and it will look like far less of a risk by then. The drivers Antonelli's just watch, and then there's talk about, okay, does he have the super license points? And Mark Hughes says, as the F2 champion, he'll be fine. So that's how highly Mark Hughes rates Antonelli. That's how highly Mercedes rate Antonelli. And as he says, you know, it might be far-fetched, but I believe that's what will happen. We can talk when it happens. So Mark Hughes is like basically fully confident that Antonelli is just this good, that Mercedes will bide their time over this decision. They'll give, you know, Antonelli some time to see how he goes in Formula 2 and as and when potentially he wins Formula 2, which if he does, that would be incredibly impressive. Formula 2 is competitive this season. Behrman, the Ferrari junior, is pretty highly rated as well. He's a link to a Formula 1 seat in the future. But Antonelli is, you know, meant to be teenage prodigy next, you know, next generation effectively of Formula 1 champions. That's how Mercedes view him. And if he delivers on that this season, it's going to be tough down there for sure in Formula 2. The tyres are the same as last year, I believe. So there's, you know, he brand new rookie to the sport. Hasn't even done Formula 3, but he's won basically everything else that he's ever done. He is driving with Prima as well, who are widely considered to be the best team in Formula 2. So sure, the cars are the same, but setup and these other things, pit stops and these other factors definitely mean that Prima generally are at the top of the championships down there, despite the fact that the cars are basically stock, but his teammate is going to be Behrman. It'll be fascinating. Behrman's now done a year in Formula 2, did very well. Other drivers down there have done multiple years. They'll have a better grasp on the tyres, but the cars are brand new, really. Not brand new, but significantly different to last year's version. So there is any chance that in terms of aerodynamics, the cars are kind of reset. The drivers will be building their knowledge base up from the ground, and therefore Antonelli, if he is as good as Mercedes think he is, has every chance of being very competitive next season, if not trying to win the Formula 2 championship. If he does that, then Mercedes' decision is rather interesting. And it's almost echoes in some ways. What might happen to Russell is kind of similar to what's happened to Ricardo, right? When Ricardo joined Red Bull, he was, you know, Vettel was on his way out. But of course, at that time, the team was not as good in the new set of regulations, right? The power unit wasn't up to scratch and all this other stuff was happening. So Ricardo joins the dominant team of the previous years when they had not been a dominant team anymore. And just as they got back to being decent again, in some respects, the happen. You know, the next generational talent, he came through and usurped Ricardo in some ways. Is a similar thing going to happen with Russell? I guess we'll have to stay tuned. He joins the best team just as they fall off and then there you go, you know, there's a prodigal rookie talent potentially coming through the ranks, and I think that'll be very interesting. So, look, it happened with Red Bull, what they did with Verstappen, and if Antonelli is as good as people think that he is, that's a very interesting, and it would be a very bold option. Like, if he just turns 18, has won Formula 2 or whatever, and is straight into a Formula 1 car without any more experience under his belt, they could sign a safer option, like maybe an Albon or a Sainz, or these other guys I mentioned, that would qualify as a bold decision. Decision. And this is the comment that Toto Wolff makes on Hamilton's departure. Maybe this is an opportunity to do something bold. Now, this could mean other respects as well. This could mean try and, you know, reinvigorate some engineering might into the team, hire people in. And I think the way to potentially get people hired into the team is to bring on like a big name like a Fernando Alonso, because, you know, in the same way that Hamilton's bringing people to Ferrari, a guy like Alonso would attract people to try and come and work with him at Mercedes. That's one option. But the other bold option for sure is putting you know, a rookie who's like basically just going to turn 18 in the car, Andrea Kimi Antonelli. So it's probably not going to be Nico Rosberg, but I think that this statement itself doesn't mean they will for sure do this, but it definitely means that it narrows down the options on what he might be considering because as has been discussed, if you're saying you're going to do something bold of the options available, there really are only a couple of options that make sense as being bold picks. And those are either Antonelli or pretty much Fernando Alonso, which are two drivers on the complete opposite end of the spectrum in terms of experience. But as a result, they both qualify for being a bold decision. And as much as Russell and Alonso get along well, apparently outside of uh, the sports, if they were teammates, you guys know how Alonso is. Like he is absolutely not going to want to, you know, play second fiddle or anything like that 
like that. So neither are probably some of the other drivers that I mentioned. But Russell cannot be necessarily happy if Hamilton goes and then all of a sudden it's Fernando Alonso coming in to replace him. But that is probably the most bold move of them all really to put Alonso in the car. And ideally, like as far as I'm concerned, Alonso might be a good stopgap in a way. Bring Alonso in for a year, two years or whatever while Antonelli develops. I don't know. Then get him in the car. That's maybe an option. But it's still bold to put Alonso in, especially when Hamilton leaves to get Alonso in the car. Like given their rivalry would be fascinating to say the very least. I would love to see it personally. This would be my preferred option by I think a bit of a landslide. And it would be a bold one I think for Mercedes because you know putting Alonso in, giving you know trying to give him the chance to win another race or maybe compete for the championship or whatever. I think he probably would jump at the chance to do that. The question is, is that a good decision for Mercedes? That's a valid question. But if Total Wolf's talking about being bold and being ambitious and trying to make moves that are gonna you know bring some vitality maybe back to the team and maybe even you know bring them some talent that's going to be championship capable then the two options in the middle here make the most sense based on that analysis so very much interested to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below just one final comment here. you guys might have seen actually that Andretti Cadillac were firing back at Formula One over the fact that they got rejected their Formula One bid apparently by the way Formula One sent them an email several months ago to say hey guys if you want to jump on a call with us to discuss this, then let us know type thing. That email went into a junk folder, which was never discovered and therefore was deleted after like 30 days or whatever it is. So Andretti didn't even know that they'd been invited to this meeting, which is shambolic on multiple angles. Firstly, from Formula One management, You'd think if they really cared, they might have tried a bit harder. They sent one email and they were like, all right, that's enough. Like, you know, they could have emailed somebody else at the team. They could have phoned somebody up, but they didn't decide to. And somebody that was responsible for managing that account and didn't check the, the junk mail. And even then, the fact that it went into the junk mail is kind of funny, right? You'd thought of an official email would have um, not got in there. But, you know, whatever. They missed the email and therefore they've been emphatically rejected. Not exactly a therefore. They probably would have been rejected anyway. But Andretti were like, hang on a second. You guys gave us the chance to chat like we're down but uh we're already rejected now so that's unlucky and this is kind of what they say we would never decline a meeting with them we want to have a meeting with you guys but um it went into the junk folder as we see here actually yeah an invitation to an in-person meeting from an FOM staff member went into a junk folder unbelievable scenes and yes Andretti not so happy with the current set of circumstances but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time